Okay, I'm doing this in installments because <clears throat> the way the uh, the video and the sound sync up, um, my voice is going to travel past my lips and become a disincarnate entity if I if I don't do it in little segments. So so. A chant began to well up, punctuated with angry cries of litterbug and get that bear. Interspersed amidst the crowd were sentient vegetable creatures and walruses wearing astronaut gear, all worked up, nervous and agitated. Police officers had begun to lay down yellow tape across the nearest intersections. A cadre in green jumpsuits that prominently displayed the recycle symbol jumped from a van and began to run towards him. Making an effort to remain calm, Rinaldo quickly re-entered the store, shrugged on his backpack, jumped on his unicycle and took off through the back door. Cycling furiously, he took a series of back streets until he reconnected with the main drag. He could hear feet pounding the asphalt, whistles being blown. Glancing around him, he saw what looked like a self-propelled armadillo fist bouncing down the street Lobster-like eye stalks shot up from the fist and swiveled around, locking in on the bear's coordinates. Thinking quickly, Rinaldo hid behind a hedge, ransacking his backpack for a disguise. He quickly created a sign on a square of cardboard with magic markers that said, Medicine Bear, please give to homeless totem. Strung on a bead necklace and poked some feathers into his hair. The armadillo fist Slowed down to check him out. The eye stalks hovered. The fist made a series of clicks, blips, and whirs and extruded a handful of dollar bills from its palm. Rinaldo took the money and nodded, a stoic expression on his face like a cigar store Indian. When the fist had passed, he counted the money. Cheap-ass bastard, he muttered. Five bucks will barely get me a medium latte. The bear's sojourn with Circus Berserkus followed his usual narrative arc. At first, Rinaldo's prowess with trick cycling, acrobatics, and juggling, combined with his uncanny tarot readings, captivated both circus folk and the public alike. But the honeymoon was short-lived. Despite larger and larger crowds, the daily take actually decreased, and people began to suspect a paw in the till. Lydia, the bendy girl, discovered a hole in the woman's shower wall about a foot away from the ground with tiny paw prints leading away. The telltale ruts of a small unicycle were associated with exploding clown noses, the super gluing of <clears throat> the human cannonball, booby-trapped magic axe, and near-fatal incidents with fire. But nothing was ever definitively linked with the bear and his charm, combined with his stature, made an invincible shield against any accusations. As Ronaldo's fame increased, so did the audacity and boldness of his pranks. He insinuated himself into every act, suddenly flying through the air into the arms of the trapeze artists, goosing the showgirls, teasing the gimp into hysterics. Nude girls were seen running from his trailer at all hours, weeping and sighing their bodies, bearing claw and bite marks and an unmistakable pattern of red paws imprinted on the ass. In the, in the beginning, Rinaldo was careful to choose his victims from the towns they passed through, but his appetite for carnal violence was fierce. He soon found in Rosie the tattooed lady hungers commensurate with his own, and their affair began in a fury of crop whips, paddles, candle wax, and anal pears. The rougher he was, the more she liked it. Anything he wanted to insert, she was ready to receive. There was just one problem. His name was Bradley. Not the sharpest tool in the box. Bradley the Big compensated in size, strength, and musculature for what he lacked in brain power. His long-standing with relationship with Rosie was based entirely on the strong man's extra inches. At first he dismissed his suspicions of the tiny bear. He couldn't imagine that Ronaldo could be anything but a child substitute for Rosie, an outlet for her maternal instincts. He noted without alarm the amount of time the two spent together, the way 
Rosie bore the bear on her shoulders or even crushed him close to her enormous breasts. When Bradley was around, Ronaldo did his best to appear docile and sweet. It's like you've got a live teddy bear, Bradley would say, while Rosie stroked the bear's soft fur and kissed him gently behind the ears. But as soon as Bradley left, the dynamic changed. Rinaldo's tone changed from a soft growl to a dominating roar. Rosie went on all fours, and the body used her body as a canvas for his perverse arts. One night in Des Moines, Bradley was walking his poodle when he heard a familiar voice coming from Ronaldo's trailer, followed by the sound of leather against skin and a gruff voice demanding submission. Bradley halted in his tracks. That sounds like Rosie, he said to himself. Rosie and Bear doing wild thing. Bradley not like. He stomped up to the trailer and pounded on the door. There was no response. Little Bear, shouted Bradley, is that my woman you've got in there? He began to batter the door with his huge fists. Silence. Go away, you fucktard, said the bear from inside the trailer. Slowly, Bradley registered the insult. Are you talking to me? He yelled at last. You're in for a world of hurt, you furry shit. Bradley ripped the door off its hinges and plunged his massive bulk into the trailer. The first sight to greet his eyes was Rinaldo in a dom outfit, holding Rosie by a leash. I'm sorry, Bradley, she said. The bear is just so masterful. How could you do this to me, wailed Bradley. Wasn't I good enough for you? How did this happen? How long have you two been? Rinaldo reached up and raked his claws over Bradley's stomach. Time for you to leave, he said. I don't want to have to hurt you. Just go, now. The strong man lunged at the bear. I don't understand. What do you mean, leave? Vamos. Exit. Get out. Move. You called me a fucktard. Bradley doesn't take kindly to that word. Sounds a lot like shit talk to Bradley. Does it? asked the bear. I think it's just an appropriate description. What do you think, Rosie? Pretty much, said the tattooed lady. Shit talker, he yelled Bradley. Grabbing Rinaldo by the hind legs, he tugged him out of the trailer, wind him, windmilled him around his head, and threw him across the grounds. 